thank you for letting me be here. I love having the opportunity to get in front of people in the community and let them know what's going on in Young Life. Um, young Life is an organization that cares deeply about um, young people, high school people and middle school people. And um, one thing we've realized over the years is that we're not very good about letting people know what we're doing. Um, and so anytime I get a chance to get in front of a group like you guys, that's awesome. And I was doing a little research on the, the, rot the Rotary um, and saw that you know part of your guys' mission too is to serve, serve your community. And really that's what Young Life is, is an organization that serves the community in particular, the youth in the community. Um, I'm gonna start by showing you guys a little video because I, yeah, the visuals seem to always be better and then you don't have to listen to me that long. Um, and then I will share a little bit with you and then Annabelle will share with you as well. That's a long one. Within the body of Christ, there's a wide range of, of youth ministries. And ours is really going after the secular kid. The kid who would never, ever, ever think about coming to anybody's church. To go after the kids that many people in society are scared to walk alongside. We don't shame kids. We don't try to change their behavior and then convert them. We try to love them into the kingdom. We want to get to know them as people. And we have a, a line in our mission statement that even if kids do not respond to the gospel, we're still going to love them. We do not have an office where kids drop by. We really encourage our staff and volunteers to get out there where kids are. Meeting them at the high school, meeting them at the football field, meeting them on the soccer field, meeting them at swim meet, and just hanging out with kids, winning the right to be heard. Two terms that we talk about when we do young life ministry. Young life uh, is for high school and then wildlife is for junior high kids. We work with kids in the suburbs. We work with inner city kids, kids with disabilities, military kids who are in other countries. Young Life's program is adaptable in cultures all around the world. And so we have Young Life clubs in Mongolia, in Costa Rica, the United Kingdom. I love Young Life's motto is every kid everywhere for eternity. It's every kid. I think the Message Bible writes it perfectly when it says, and the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. And Young Life is composed of men and women in the flesh who move into the neighborhood to hang out with teenagers. My first time going out and being with kids was very terrifying. If you haven't done it in a while, just walk on a campus in a high school, walk up to a 16, 17 year old group of kids and say hi. are hearing the story of Jesus for the very first time. What we try to do is to provide a platform to share the gospel. Safe environment 
trying a few ideas on for size about what it means to actually walk in a relationship with Jesus. Kids get plugged into church. Uh, kids need a place that when Young Life's out there, the local church is a place that's going to be their name. Young Life turned my life around seriously. I feel that I was one of the diamonds that was in the dirt. And I needed some little rinsing off so somebody to find me. I just got tired of lying, uh, not being myself. Where is my life going? Like, I'm going to be drunk all my life? Like, that's not me. I can't do that. I need to, like, get a direction. Like, know where I'm going to go. If I hadn't had gay life in my life, my life would be nothing like it is today because I would I wouldn't have a relationship with Christ and everything would be completely different. Once I went to camp, I started to understand that it wasn't the people that I was hanging out with and it wasn't the club, the activities, the funny skits or anything. It was that God was present whenever your life was around. It's one of the most important things in my entire life. Young Life is about an individual Christian adult going to the world of kids for the sake of one kid at a time. It started out down in Texas um, with a youth pastor that really realized that a lot of kids don't show up at churches, that you know you really need to go out where they are, build a relationship with them, earn the right to be heard is their motto, um, show them that you care before they care what you know. Um, and so about 15 years ago, I was a prosecutor in Carleton County and had like all the juvenile crimes, crimes against children and stuff like that. And I saw so many kids with so much hopelessness um, and in the capacity that I was as a prosecutor, I really couldn't share any kind of hope with them. I was a young life kid, so I grew up down in the cities and I had the privilege of being in a community that had young life. And for me, it was the first time in my life that I had adults um, in a faith community really love me unconditionally. Um, because of the choices that I made in high school, I wasn't the most lovable kid. So, you know, most adults just kind of set me aside as, you know, she's not going to mount anything and um, not really worth investing your time into and stuff like that. So to have somebody that was willing to love me, and like they said, I love when he said, you know, we keep loving kids no matter how they respond to the gospel. I have kids that will walk in and tell me I'm an atheist, and I just say, still love you, come on in. Um, so because of my personal experience with it and what the impact it had on me and how it really formed a lot of who I am, um, as a prosecutor, I just really prayed about quitting my job and starting in life in the community. And um, some other people joined me with that, the Jim and Lori Hatch, who I'd never met before in my life, um, so which is kind of neat because they're really good friends of mine now. And then uh, Melanie Sprecher from Our Saviors and um, another couple, um, Pat and Helene Byrne. So we started it all as volunteers and kids started coming. There was about six kids or ten kids and then every year, you know, there'd be 30 kids and there'd be 50 kids and um, it got so that it was, I couldn't manage it as a stay-at-home mother, and um, so we hired somebody part-time a couple years ago, and we just, our board just approved hiring somebody full-time. Um, Young Life is not affiliated with any particular church, and that's very intentional. Um, it is a Christian ministry, um, and we go where kids are at. We don't have a building, like they said, that we set up program and have kids come to us. It's all about us going to where they're at, loving them where they're at, accepting them where they're at, knowing their culture. And I love the, the when he's on the video, you know, have you ever tried walking onto a high school campus and just saying, hey, how's it going to some kid? I mean, I mean, talk about scary. I always think of Young Life as a mission field in the high school because you have to know their culture, you have to know their language, their music, their dress, their, I mean, it really is a subculture within the culture. And so to be accepted within that culture really takes years. I mean, it's I've been doing this for 10 years and 
I feel like I have a lot of credibility with kids now because I know that I genuinely love them and care for them. Um, so um, that's what's different about it. And so we meet, so the C's that they were talking about is, uh, we do club every Monday night. It's in a home. Again, it's intentional because a lot of kids that come to Young Life are not church kids. Um, and so if we meet in a church, there's kids that automatically won't come the door open if anybody needs to leave. Oh, no, somebody's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're locked in otherwise. Yeah, I, yes. I, um, so, um, so club is every Monday night, and it is just a crazy kind of energy, fun night. We meet in homes, private homes. Anybody that has a space and will take us, we'll go. Um, we do singing, we do skits, we do games, a lot of mixers, break down walls between kids and cliques. And um, one of the adults gives a talk that's always based on the Bible. Uh, we want kids to know who God is and what he has to say about who they are. Um, and then um, we have camp, which is a huge deal to take kids to a week of camp. I have found, I've been to camp, I think, eight summers with kids, and I have just seen God do amazing things in kids' lives in the week that they're there. Um, and it's not, you know, I think sometimes we think of the kids that need adults as just the kids that look like they're hurting, you know, kind of your dark, gothy kids and stuff like that. There's a lot of really put-together kids out there that are really hurting inside. Um, and so to have the chance to spend a week with them and let them just detach from what's going on in the world, we take their phones, their electronics, their everything, and let them just kind of think about, you know, who am I? Am I created for a purpose? What is that? Does God care? Does he have anything to say about who I am? Um, and kids just love that. I don't think I've ever had a kid not say that was the best week of my entire life. They absolutely love it. And then for the kids that come home and, and are more curious and want to learn more, we do what's called campaigners. It's a Bible study. It's a small group that gets together with the leader. Um, and gets you know deeper into the Bible and studies and asks questions and, and uh, um, stuff like that. We also do service stuff. We're doing Feed My Starving Children tomorrow. Um, let's hope the weather cooperates with us doing that. So um, we do Feed My Starving Children. Uh, we've done stuff in um, uh, cooperation with volunteer services and done raking at people's homes. Um, and there's something else I can't even remember. So we try to encourage kids to serve as well and give back to the community because a lot is poured into them. We have one part-time staff person, like I said. We're going to have a full-time staff person we're actually hiring right now. And then there's probably about nine of us that are just volunteers. You know, this is what we do just as a volunteer. And it's a lot of your time and energy because we're, you know, we're at the basketball games, we're at the football games, we're at the hockey games where, you know, if, if you ever see young life people around, we're not creeps. We're just hanging out where kids are at and caring about what they're doing. Um, so that's a lot of it. And we do encourage kids to get involved in a church. In no way are we a competition with the church. I meet regularly with all the ministerium I meet with. Um, and just so they know what's going on, I know what, what they're doing, and we try to work cooperatively for the betterment of what is going on with these kids and for these kids. So uh, we probably have about 250 kids that come through the door throughout the year. Um, in the 10 years we've been doing it, we've had about 800 kids come through the door and um, it's it's not a program that you have to sign up for or be a member of kids can just show up so whatever house we're at you know kids just show up it's never the exact same group of kids on any given Monday um, it's just a yeah whoever shows up that Monday and it's different all the time um, I'm trying to think what else I should tell you I think I'd probably rather have you guys listen to Annabelle she gets she gets a little nervous talking for people but um, the cool thing about Young Life for me is that, you know, in the 10 years that I've done it, I have seen God change lives. And, and, and I've seen that happen because adults are willing to walk into a kid's life, do life with them, love them no matter where they're at, you know, encourage them no matter where they're at. And so I've seen kids just find hope and figure out, you know, what life has for them. And so it will be a sad day when I quit doing it because I just, I love seeing kids have hope and purpose in life. So. Annabelle, Regina. Yes. <laughs> I know. She said, do I have to talk in front of him? I said, well, no, we can just do it like by a satellite from the car. <laughs> huh? You do good. Uh, I started going to Young Life when I was in ninth grade, at the end of my ninth grade year. And I um, didn't really, I didn't have a church background and I wasn't all together, I guess. And so, um, I got invited and I saw signs in the school and so I went with some of my friends and checked it out and um, right when I walked through the door um, there was a couple leaders there just like 
crazy and like screaming and like they knew your names and stuff and I thought that was pretty cool so then like we went downstairs and there was more crazy leaders like jumping around and like they just made you feel super welcome and like um, well we played like games too um, there's some crazy games too like yesterday at Young Life they like ate like they had caramel apples hanging and pe two people had to eat them it was, it was crazy <laughs> anyways <laughs> So then, um, 11th grade year was kind of a hard year for me, um, and I decided to go to camp that summer, and um, so I went to camp not knowing what I was getting myself into, but like right when we like pulled up, it was like a big resort, and there was everything just like seemed so perfect, and like um, everyone was so happy there, and like even the kids that were hurting, just um, they everyone would open up and like. The leaders would always like say like are you having a good time or and stuff and then um, after camp or during camp I gave my life to Christ and um, when we went back the leaders like kept contacting me and like um, we'd have like one on one time and stuff and they would um, ask how I was doing and like they would just and then like their stories they would tell during Young Life Club they would like relate to a lot of um, kids in our school that I knew were hurting and like they would relate to some of my stories and it was just really cool. Yeah. Thanks Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> I met Annabelle through uh, girls basketball and I brought my two granddaughters to a game one night and they brought their coloring books and they were sitting on the bleachers and it wasn't long before she was over there with them coloring. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the neatest thing was she invited my granddaughters to her grad party. And I'll, they'll never forget that because they got to go to Annabelle's grad party. That's the kind of young lady she is. Isn't she awesome? <laughs> uh, and that's been the neat thing too is to watch the kids that have been so poured into um, I mean, Annabelle's gotten to know a lot of the leaders really well and spent a lot of time with a lot of leaders. And, um, but, you know, I've seen a number of the kids go on to be Young Life leaders. There's a number of our students that are from Colquet and Esco that are doing Young Life in the cities. There are Young Life leaders in the cities. There's a college Young Life. Some of them are leaders down there. There's a, it's called Capernaum. It's for um, uh, physical and mental handicap. Um, students and and we have leaders that have done that and so it's really neat to see the kids that have been poured into pouring back out into other people in the community we have a couple of people with Biz Sorensen I don't know if anybody knows Biz Sorensen is back serving and Dan Porter and so there's just a number of people that have been through Young Life here that are giving back so um, yeah so do you have any questions where is the camp in how do you, I mean, do you raise money to send some of these kids to the camp? Yep. Or? Um, great question. There, Young Life has about 20 properties throughout the United States. Um, and the cool thing about Young Life is because it's faith-based, they don't get any type of, it's all private donations. So a lot of these properties have been donated. The property we go to right now is in Detroit Lakes, and that's just because a lot of kids in the community can't really afford the extra $300 that it would take to take a coach out to Michigan or Colorado or whatever. So we have stayed local. Um, the camp right now for a week is 500 bucks. So for a lot of kids, that is not a possibility financially. So what we've done, and actually this is a really cool service thing too, um, is that we have partnered with the city with um, Les and Caleb Peterson over at the city, and we do an operation cleanup in April, April 28th, we'll do it this year, but it's always in the spring after the snow dumps melt and stuff like that. The kids all get together, we have two nights that we do call nights, and the kids will call people from the community, either people they know or people that we know that are supportive of Young Life, and they'll call and ask for pledges, and then they work for the day. And so they'll, so instead of selling, because I think all of us are kind of tired of buying stuff, um, and, and with the school cuts, I mean, people are selling stuff for everything. So, um, so they ask for sponsors, and then they clean for the day. So we all, you know, like on a Saturday, the city gives us a list of stuff they want done, if they want brush cleared, if they want yard, you know, parks raked, if they want, we, you know, all the junk out of the snow dumps or uh, whatever. And the majority of kids can get most of their camp paid for by doing that if they, if they really are hitting the phone um, and asking people. Young Life is completely, um, it's like a Boy Scout club or something. There's a national Young Life. There's probably about 
3,000 communities in the United States that have Young Life. Um, and this is a local chapter of it. So we are responsible locally to support um, Young Life financially. So it's based on private donors. Yeah, does anybody else have any questions? <coughs> Well, I really do appreciate being here and you guys listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.